Welcome to another session of analytical techniques. Today we'll look into paper chromatography. Before we move on, subscribe for more of such informative videos. At the end of the session, you'll be able to elucidate the principle of paper chromatography, explain the procedure to separate and identify the components of a mixture by this technique. And you'll be able to discuss the various methods of visualizing the separated components and list out the advantages, disadvantages and applications of this technique. Let us first see what is paper chromatography. Paper chromatography is a technique used to identify the components or compounds present in a mixture by separating them using a thin stationary phase and a mobile phase. This is majorly used to study the purity of a compound and also to identify the various compounds present in a mixture. We will see the requirements for this technique. First is the stationary phase. We generally use a Wattman filter paper which is majorly made of cellulose. We can also use modified papers like acid or base, wash, uh, base washed filter paper, hydrophilic papers or hydrophobic papers. Next comes the mobile phase. Here we use a developing solvent. It can be a single solvent. If, the, if we are unable to separate it with using a single solvent, we can go for the mixture of solvents. The solvent should be reasonably volatile. It can be hydrophilic or hydrophobic in nature. Next is your sample to be separated. We also call it as a solute. Uh, sample containing the mixture of compounds and or individual compounds. That is the reference samples will be individual compounds and a sample to be analyzed may have mixture of compounds present in it. The mechanism behind this technique is partition chromatography. This is liquid liquid phase. That is the stationary phase, although we say that the filter paper is made of cellulose, actually the water present inside the paper actually acts as a stationary phase. And the mobile phase is as usual, the mobile solvent or the developing solvent. Next mechanism is the adsorption chromatography, which is a solid liquid phase technique. That is the stationary phase here. We use a special paper where the paper is impregnated in silica or alumina where silica or alumina acts as an adsorbent which is similar to your TLC that is thin layer chromatography which we have already discussed in the previous session. You can see the link at the top. If you haven't watched it, you can watch it in detail. Next is your mobile phase that is a mobile solvent. Although we have two mechanisms, the common mechanism followed is the partition chromatography. We look into the detailed procedure of how to analyze this method. That is, we take a specified piece of paper. That is, it can be a filter paper cut into a specified length, required shape and length, depending on the chamber to be used for developing. And firstly, we need to draw a line at the bottom, which should be one or two centimeters above the bottom. We should just use a pencil, not a pen, because the uh, ink in the pen may dissolve in the solvent. So, avoid using pen. You should use a pencil for drawing the line. Next is the spotting the sample, the uh, sample to be spotted. This we are generally taking the colored sample firstly. That is, we assume that um, dye molecule is taken where a mixture of dyes are present in a dye. And we have spotted it using a capillary tube or... You can use a chromatographic pipette or a micro pipette. You should spot it exactly. It should not be too much or too low. Next, before we move on to the procedure, you should take the developing chamber where the solvent is taken at the bottom. It, uh, the level of the solvent should be such that when this paper is inserted, the spot should not immerse into the solvent. Before we insert this paper into the chamber, the chamber should be saturated with the solvent. So you close the lid and allow the chamber to be saturated. I have just shown in a very light blue color to assume that the solvent is saturated throughout the chamber. Now this spotted paper is inserted into the chamber and because it's a paper, we are clipping the paper and we are closing the lid. Now the solvent slowly rises up through the capillary action against the gravity that is from bottom to top. You should not allow the solvent to go to the top edge. So just one or two centimeters before the top edge we need to remove it out. Uh, 
and before it dries we should identify the distance traveled by the solvent and you again using a pencil you should draw a line this is the distance traveled by the solvent we also call it as a solvent front and uh, because it's a colored sample you are able to see the four different colors being separated out from a single spot and you can just dry the paper and use it you can even use a hair dryer or a ordinary air dryer to dry it this is a very simple technique and here you can you don't know what are these four spots because you haven't used any reference in case you know what are the different dye molecules or you can assume what can be the pred if you can predict what are the dye molecules present in this single dye then you can use the reference samples that is if i assume that a b c and d may be present inside this dye molecule then i spot it that is the sample to one edge and then a b c and d and finally the same process is repeated and here you see that the spotting pattern is slightly different but now you are able to tell based on the distance traveled by the each component you can tell that this yellow spot belongs to a and the orange to b red to c and this brown to d this way if you use a reference you can tell confidently that this particular compound is a known compound and this is its reference sample this is how you develop it but most of our samples are generally uncolored especially the organic samples in such case you can take this sample spot it in a similar pattern as we did the in the previous case and a and b are the reference samples in case you are studying the progress of a reaction a can be the reactant molecule and b can be the product molecule but this all the three spots will be invisible to your eyes but in order to understand i have just given the pale colors but actually it will be invisible in the similar way you are going to develop it by dipping into the developing chamber but you need to visualize it by using some visualizing agent a commonly used visualizing agent is iodine chamber you just put some iodine um, crystals at the bottom and you dip the paper and here where the spots are not actually visible but once it enters the iodine chamber and leave it for some time you can see that the spots are visible so this spot corresponds to a and this spot corresponds to b this is how you visualize it you can use various visualizing agents this is a very common visualizing agent ninhydrin is generally used to separate amino acids to visualize amino acids and sometimes if you have fluorescent uh, substances to be separated then you can also use an uv chamber that is when you uh, glow uv light over the some um, developed uh, paper you can see that the spots are colored fluorescent in color because the substance is fluorescent in nature so in the presence of the uv light you need to mark the spots and note down and once you remove the uv light the spots will not be visible to you that is another method of visualizing there are different types of paper chromatography the common type which we have seen now is ascending chromatography that is the solvent moves from bottom to top that is against the gravity next is the descending chromatography that the solvent moves from top to bottom that is in with its own gravity here in this case the solvent reservoir will be at the top of the chamber instead of the solvent being at the bottom and next comes the ascending and descending chromatography that is both ascending and descending takes place parallelly uh, uh, parallelly in the sense in a single process that is here we can increase the length of the paper so first in case it's ascending that is top to bottom and then from here it will be descending that is bottom to top this way the length of the paper can be increased and the separation and the resolution of the compounds will be much better next is radial chromatography or circular chromatography which is also common here we take a circular watman filter paper and we put this spot at the center we'll see in detail in the next slide where the solvent moves from the center to the periphery a next method is the two dimensional chromatography that is first we develop it as we have done in the previous case that is ascending chromatography next you tilt the paper to the right angle 
and again develop the second development will be right angle to the previous development this way in case in uh, uh, two or three spots are overlapped in the first development where the resolution is not clear it could be resolved at the second development we may use the same solvent or we can use a different solvent in the second development stage this is what we have seen in the radial chromatography you take a petri dish and place the uh, Wattman filter paper circular filter paper above this and the solvent is actually going through the capillary action using a wick that is the wick touches the sample as well as the solvent slowly through capillary action the solvent penetrates and enters the paper and as usual the solvent moves from the center to the periphery we are not supposed to allow the solvent to move to the edge and you stop it before it moves to the edge and remove it out this is your top view of the filter paper here because i have only one sample i have placed it here but if you have plenty of samples this can be used that is by drawing a circle inner circle here you can place different samples along the periphery of that small circle and you can allow it to develop so that each sample will be developed and the spots are shown each side you can use plenty of samples in the circular paper chromatography next important uh, thing to calculate is the retention factor that is retention factor is the distance traveled by the sample or the solute and distance by distance traveled by the solvent that is first we have uh, drawn a line at the top and I said that the, this is the distance traveled by the solvent this is nothing but the solvent front this is known to us in case this is 5 cm and the four different spots one is A has traveled 1 cm B has traveled 2 and 2.5 by C and 4 by D so you can calculate the retention factor of each of the components you can see that 1 by 5 2 by 5 2.5 by 5 and you get different values here what it signifies is actually the mechanism behind this process is this separation mainly takes place due to the difference in the affinity of each component towards the solvent and its affinity towards the so, um, stationary phase that is if it has if for example if the component a has more affinity towards the stationary phase than its affinity towards the mobile phase it will move slower because it is more uh, inclined towards the stationary phase so it will move very slowly and its distance traveled by a will be small now if the affinity of the component is more towards the mobile phase that is it will be soluble in the mobile phase and it moves much faster here d is moving much faster that is d has more affinity towards the solvent that is a mobile phase rather than the stationary phase and this reflects in your rf value also d has the highest rf value saying that the distance traveled by the d is much higher than the distance traveled by a so knowing the rf factors you can tell which component has more affinity towards the stationary phase and which component has more affinity towards the mobile phase this is how the separation takes place and to summarize the first is the choice of the filter paper based on the pore size, quality of the sample, type of the development. Next is the spotting and next is the development, developing stage that is you insert the paper into the chamber and develop it. Here is where the separation takes place depending on its affinity towards the stationary phase and the mobile phase. Next is visualization. If it's colored, very simple, remove the paper, vaporize the solvent or dry the solvent. You can see the colors if it is uncolored you need to use a visualizing agent like iodine chamber or if the compounds are fluorescent in nature you can use uv chamber advantages of this technique it's very simple and quick analysis very cheap does not require more space you just require a single chamber and disadvantages large quantities can be applied on the paper uh, cannot be applied on the paper and not suitable for quantitative analysis Complex mixtures cannot be separated, not very accurate. It is. It can be used for many applications. Major applications I have give, uh, listed out, that is pharmaceutical industries, ingredients in drugs, hormones, and you can also 
find out the purity of a sample organic components this is very uh, important application in the laboratories where the separation of carbohydrates vitamins antibiotics amino acids metabolites in drugs in blood urine samples can be done in organic compounds separation and identification of salts in complexes this is all for the session thank you bye bye don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done please drop in your comments thank you until we meet in another session bye